Hey friends, welcome back to Spiritual Conversation. I am your host, Jacqueline Clare, Mermaid of the Airwaves, here to take your hand and go on some deep dives together. So today I have another another juicy one that I, I want to explore with you, something about kindness and justice. Kindness and lifting your voice to speak up about things that you might be in disagreement with the people or some of the social forces around you. Before I do though, I just want to invite you this season of gift giving to avail yourself of Noble Beings, which is available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble in paperback and hardback. This is a spiritual handbook for children of all ages, illustrated by me. Um, these are short excerpts from the Baha'i teachings on how to live, how to pray, how to treat others. The illustrations are meant to be engaging for children and help them grasp some of the meaning of the quotes. And the quotes themselves are rich with beauty and meaning and definitely a, a lifetime of study for grown-ups with children inside of us as well. So. Make sure you know about that. Noble Beings, a spiritual handbook for children of all ages. So, this um, we're living in crazy times with so many emotionally laden issues. No longer does it seem, maybe it never was, I don't know, but in my lifetime, it's there are no longer issues in the social slash political sphere that are like ball games, you know, like, well, I'll see it this way and you see it that way. It seems like everything is very dire and very much impacts people's personal lives and very much families and children and that sort of thing. So we're, we're in this heightened time and there's all of these very emotional, strong issues going on. And again, these issues making massive impacts on people's lives, like the trans movement, like the whole pride movement, like CRT and critical race theory and different things that are being taught in schools and in the media as far as like a, a categorization based on what color you are, what sex you are, etc., things like that. And what if you find yourself having a different opinion than the people around you. And again, these issues are emotional because they impact people's lives and because they also touch on one's inner morality or sense of kindness or righteousness. So they're heightened for everyone on an emotional level. And you have several options, right? When you find yourself in a situation where things are kind of going in a certain direction that you don't agree with, you can keep your mouth shut and you can sort of nod and be a wallflower. And there is a tacit agreement in that. You are perceived as agreeing with whatever is being said you can argue and you can get irate and you can you can cause a scene or you can butt heads and and you can play that role of the radical this or the radical that you know um and a lot of people don't like to do that some people do some people like to butt heads and they like to play that role but a lot of people will go to great lengths to avoid those kinds of interactions you can also kind of um engage but feel like you didn't speak with eloquence or kindness that you you spoke with a certain stridentness because it took a certain degree of courage to like get yourself up to to say something um so those are like different options of how you can deal with these situations and i will admit i often go in the silent route, I try not to go so far as to nod my head because that's like outright lying even though my mouth is shut. But it it is trying to slip below the radar. Um, 
not really for fear of offending people. It's more out of a sense of self-protection that I don't want, I don't want to argue with people. I don't want people to like me less. I don't want people to see me in a negative light. And again, that's part of the problem that we have somehow uh, very much demonized different points of view. It's, it's very rare to just like, nowadays be able to have like a respectful difference of opinion because we've demonized and generalized different points of view and so it's kind of like oh you're this or that you know what I'm saying like we sort of um, we caricaturize people as either like brainwashed or radical or, or what have you so I've been thinking about all of this and I've been thinking about well, what do we do because if we uh, do remain silent about issues that go against our sense of morality and nobility and spiritual principle, then not only are we failing to honor our own conscience, the little Jiminy Cricket inside of us, and you know Jiminy Cricket is Southern for Jesus Christ, you know the connection to the Holy Spirit that speaks within us, so when we do not speak up against things that we actually disagree with, we're failing to honor that voice inside of us. We are also allowing a permissive culture to take over. And that actually hurts people. It, it has impacts in people's lives. It can disrupt, it can destroy, it can definitely damage lives, families, societies. And it makes me think of that quote uh, attributed to Martin Niemöller during the Nazi regime. And I'm sure you're familiar with it. He says, first they came for the socialists and I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionists, and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews, and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. Then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak for me. So it's like, this issue may come up, and you're like, well, that's not really doesn't affect me, I'm not gonna say anything. And then this issue may come up, well, I'm not gonna speak out. And of course, the more you don't speak out, the more it is assumed that you're with the program. And then one day, it's at home. It's coming for your children, or your spouse, or whatever it is. One day it's hitting home, and you realize, oh my gosh, I should have said something eight steps back, you know? So for people who go to work and have neighbors and families and, and believe in God and know that we are going to answer to God one day, but also don't like conflict and you want to, you know, have harmonious interactions and all of that stuff, what do we do? What can we do? And again, I'm exploring this with you because I, I think that we absolutely must lift our voices. Little by little, day by day, more and more, courage is a muscle that we can strengthen. But um, we can't tacitly go along with things that we don't agree with anymore. So these are some of the thoughts that I have come up with. First off, do not mistake kindness with silence. Every now and then that might be the wise, appropriate, God-inspired action, but usually it is a cop-out and you're doing it to protect yourself. And you're fearing men, your boss, your family, your neighbors, your friends, your spouse, more than you are your own conscience and that power that you answer to. So um, as an act of kindness for all of the things that you believe in and want to protect, lift your voice and say something, even if it's very little, to just express that you don't agree with something. And the samurai art of all of this, because these are emotional issues, 
is to have your heart pure of anger, judgment, resentment, and malice. Because you want to speak with a kindly tongue, and I think you can really only do that truly and effectively without just being sort of saccharine and fake, is if your heart belongs to God and is pure. And the only way you can do that is to ask God to help you because these are all very hot emotional issues. So you have to ask God to remove your, your anger at this injustice. Like give me the courage to speak, but remove this anger from burning and festering in my heart because that makes our, our words and our actions less effective. And again, only God can do that. Help my heart be pure. Help me to be released from um, judgment and anger of these people. Then, and that's the samurai art of this. You know, that is the war, spiritual warrior's path. If you can stand up against injustice and have a pure heart at the same time. That is the spiritual duality. That, that is the thing. And I saw a social media post recently by a, a Baha'i inspired um, blog outlet, and it was sort of suggesting that there is nothing that God will not forgive. And I'm not here to dispute that, but it just so happens that the night before I had read this hidden word, a mystical Baha'i passage addressed to the oppressors of the earth. And I remind you, perhaps I've mentioned it here before, that the Baha'i writings say to show kindness to everyone, except the liar, the tyrant, and the thief. That it's actually not kindness when you allow the liar and the tyrant and the thief to continue in their actions. And it says, withdraw your hands from tyranny, for I have pledged myself not to forgive any man's injustice. So injustice is something that um, is not per permissible. So when you see it, you have to speak out. So pray for your heart to be pure of, of festering of anger of judgment. And do your best to speak with a kindly tongue. And in that, have a silent prayer. Something has arisen. My coworkers are talking about something. Something is happening in the school, whatever it is. And you know, okay, God, this is one. Remember when we talked about that? Uh, now I'm encountering one of those instances. Please give me the words to say something. I have to say something. Just enough to, to crack up this party just a little bit. Just so... The people I'm interfacing with know that I'm actually not on board with this. God, please give me the words to say something with kindness, but that just breaks up the paradigm just enough. You know, sometimes you don't, sometimes less is more. You don't need an extensive diatribe. Sometimes you just need enough to say that you're not going along with this. And then another sort of shocking aspect of this that has occurred to me is I think your intention should not be to convince them. And I think a lot of us, that's why we stay silent because we know we can't change other people's point of view. And what if that's not the goal? What if you're not trying to persuade or convince or convert them and therefore you're not angry that they don't see it the way that you do? You're, you are testifying you are standing up against injustice. You are lifting your voice. And in so doing, you are cracking up the paradigm just a little bit. And you can also see it as sharing something. If your perspective comes from your deepening in your scripture, in your spiritual practice, in your beliefs, then it is a gift. And don't be sanctimonious about it but just have the courage to share this perspective. And again, I share something from the Baha'i writings here. Baha'u'llah says, if ye possess a jewel of which others are deprived, share it with them in a language of utmost kindliness and goodwill. 
And I know it's hard. I know it's hard when you're going against every narrative in your social sphere. But you're a spiritual warrior and you can do this. And you have the most powerful force there to help you. And what those people think doesn't really matter anyway. And you're going to be fine. No matter what happens, you're going to be fine. And you'll always be glad that you stood up against injustice. Because remember, that poem. And then one day they came for me and there was no one left to stand up for me. So if it be accepted, if it fulfill its purpose, your object is attained. Someone says, wow, thank you. Now I see it that way. Or thank you for showing me that. That's great. If anyone should refuse... Leave him unto himself and beseech God to guide him. So you don't have to try to put the nail in the coffin. And once you have expressed yourself, you may find you don't need to keep doing it, right? People know, but that's the thing. You have, you, you have to stand up so that it is not assumed that you're part of the party. And I'm not saying political party. I'm saying like party, like we're having a party and we're all, we're all drinking the same Kool-Aid or whatever. Um, beware lest ye deal unkindly with him and beware lest your heart fester. And I know that it's hard when you're mad about things going on in the world. You're mad about people being hurt or ignorant or corrupted or, um, medical experiments on children. I mean, these are things we should be deeply upset about, but we can't let our hearts be corroded and only God can help us just have to keep turning to God and asking to be cleansed from that. A kindly tongue is the lodestone, is the magnet of the hearts of men. It is the bread of the spirit. It clotheth the words with meaning. It is the fountain of the light of wisdom and understanding. So we need spiritual warriors, my friends. And it could be as simple and I'm saying simple, but I bet I'm going to make some of you sweat when I bring this up. Maybe you are not in agreement with how the trans movement is being pushed right now and the way it's being pushed on children and so forth. Maybe something you can do is not have your pronouns in your Zoom profile. And if your boss talks to you about it, with a kindly tongue, say that you think that it's contributing to something that you feel is hurting people, then you're morally opposed to it. If you live in the United States, you're supposed to have freedom of religion, you know, and, and freedom of conscience, you know? So little things like that, you know, you're, it's, it's as simple as, as a few kindly words spoken from your seat of morality and spiritual principle. And don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. I, I'm not saying to be, be reckless and dumb. Okay? So don't misinterpret. But I also want to just say, if worst case scenario, like you get fired. Well, what if, I mean... I don't want to give too big of an example so that you don't take it seriously, but I mean, is that going to be what you say when you answer to God? Like, I was afraid I would be fired. What did the, the Nazi soldier say? I know that's a big example, and I'm sorry to use maybe a larger-than-life situation, but I mean, that is the same thing. They didn't want to lose their jobs. So it's kind of like, what's the priority here? And I honestly don't think that you will. And I think that the more people who just sprinkle a little courage into their Thanksgiving, a little courage into their neighborhood interactions, a little courage into the workplace, that, uh, that we can do a lot to, to have a much less splintered and divided world and have less splintered and divided psyches, which is really what's going on here, isn't it? When our words and actions and inactions and lack of words are in misalignment with what we believe and what we know in our hearts. So I'll leave you with that, my friends. Thank you for taking this deep dive with me. I love to hear your thoughts. Uh, the next 
spiritual conversation live, our Zoom conversations that are unrecorded and just a friendly space to share your thoughts will be December 17th. So let me know if you would like to be included in that and I will send you the logins. Please remember to like, subscribe, comment, share this content. If you would like to support my work, please check out my Patreon page, Jacqueline Claire Art, to get some beautiful artwork for your home, for your workplace, for the holidays, and check out Noble Beings on Amazon and Barnes & Noble. Until next time, my friends, I wish you the absolute best in being those courageous warriors of light and playing your part in making this world a better place. I will catch you next time.